and welcome back to the Lair of Legless Legends. I'm Scarlet Nightshade and today we're going to be talking about the Paradise Flying Snake. Chrysopalia paradisi, or the Paradise Flying Snake, is a slim-bodied, mildly venomous rear fang colubrid snake that is best known for its ability to glide from tree to tree. Their ability to glide is possible through an interesting phenomenon known as aerobatic undulation, in which they flatten out their ribs and wiggle in the air, allowing them to glide. Paradise Flying Snakes are characterized by their bright yellow bellies and black and green speckled dorsal scales, often in contrast with the vibrant orange, yellow, and red pattern along the vertebral scales in many specimens. While not commonly kept in captivity, more herpetoculturists are becoming successful in keeping them as we learn more about this fascinating species. That said, almost all of the paradise flying snakes that are currently available are wild-caught imports. If you have never kept a wild-caught import, or if you are not aware of the challenges in keeping them, I would suggest checking out my most recent video on why dragon snakes are difficult to keep in captivity. While the information in that video is focused on dragon snakes, much of it can also be generally applied to all wild-caught imports. Comparatively, however, paradise flying snakes are a bit easier to keep than many other wild-caught species. Firstly, it should be known that paradise flying snakes have a diet consisting primarily of lizards, although the occasional frog, rodent, or bird is also a part of their natural diet. My paradise flying snakes are fed a diet of anoles, house geckos, button quail, various species of tree frogs, and occasionally small mice. They are typically very enthusiastic eaters, and interestingly, unlike most snakes equipped with venom, they also constrict while envenomating their prey. Though there is little need to worry about the venom's effect on humans, I always encourage fellow keepers to exercise caution when handling rear fang venomous snakes, even if their venom is declared medically insignificant. Regarding the enclosure for the paradise flying snake, while they require plenty of vertical space, it is also important to provide horizontal space so that they may properly thermoregulate. Flying snakes are a very active diurnal species and will utilize every bit of space offered to them. Since they're arboreal in nature and average about four foot in length, an adult enclosure should be at least 36 inches tall, but bigger is always better. With the more ideal housing option being a 60 by 48 by 24 inch custom PVC enclosure. Being that they are from Southeast Asia, the species does have high humidity requirements, which means the material your enclosure is constructed from will play a major role in how easy it is for you to maintain proper husbandry. I strongly suggest avoiding glass enclosures, as they will quickly evaporate any moisture within the environment. Therefore, opting for materials such as PVC to house the species in is your best choice. They will appreciate floor space given there are enough hides for them to take shelter in at night. I prefer to achieve this by orienting various pieces of driftwood and logs together so that they form a large dome underneath. Caves, or more traditional hides, can also be used as long as they provide adequate cover. Your enclosure should also be very secure. Paradise flying snakes are incredibly fast, and due to their slim bodies and prying curiosity, a strong and reliable locking enclosure is crucial in order to contain them. As previously mentioned, flying snakes are native to Southeast Asia and have high humidity requirements. This means that their substrate should be able to retain plenty of moisture. I prefer to use a 50-50 blend of sphagnum peat moss and vermiculite. You may also want to consider adding a drainage layer, using appropriate media such as BioDrain to help keep the moisture more evenly distributed throughout the substrate and allow for more ventilation. Since paradise flying snakes have fast metabolisms, you can expect to spot clean about one to three times weekly. Keepers that use wooden elements such as bark or driftwood may want to invest in coarse grit sandpaper as the species tends to leave their excrement on their favorite climbing spots, in which you can clean by sanding it off. As an arboreal species, paradise flying snakes will not benefit from undertank heating elements such as heat mats. Therefore, an overhead heat source is necessary to provide them with the heat they require. They also enjoy basking, often taking up the opportunity to do so at least five to six days a week. Thus, a UVB plus UVA basking bulb is recommended for use during the daylight hours. As with all heat sources, a thermostat is necessary to keep the heat output stable. For basking bulbs, a dimming proportional thermostat is the best option. Set your thermostat to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and fix your probe to a safe and secure position near the tallest basking point. Using an infrared thermometer gun, you can dial in the correct temperature as needed. Another important aspect of keeping paradise flying snakes is enrichment. While I encourage enrichment for all species of snake, I especially encourage it for flying snakes. Methods of enrichment include plenty of space to climb as well as many perches and platforms to climb onto. Grapevines, bendable branches, driftwood, and PVC pipes work well in providing the proper climbing enrichment. And remember to include an appropriate basking light for them to utilize as well. I also highly recommend including an elevated water source for them to drink from. You can use small glass pots used for plants that are fixed to the enclosure with suction cups. I will include the link to these in the description 
description. While a ground level water dish can also be provided, flying snakes typically prefer to drink from an elevated water source instead. As with most wild caught imports, it is important to limit handling as much as possible. Paradise flying snakes are usually not very handleable and will often bite and musk as they attempt to quickly escape your grasp. They are also very flighty, and one wrong move, they can be gone within the blink of an eye. As for sexing flying snakes, standard methods of sexing are not advised. Since this species is a very delicate, slim bodied snake, it is best to have them sexed through DNA testing. The sex determination test can be performed through a specialized lab, such as Rare Genetics, in which you simply send in a shed to be tested. Results are typically received within a few business days, and will accurately confirm the sex of the snake without having to use more invasive methods of sex determination. In summary, Paradise Flying Snakes are a fascinating species, renowned for their ability to glide from the treetops they inhabit. While not the easiest species to keep, they will thrive under the correct care and are slowly becoming more established in captivity. Their vibrant coloration, inquisitive nature, and interesting behaviors make them a very rewarding species to keep. And we hope to enjoy these remarkable tree gliders for many more years to come. If you would like to see more rare, beautiful species of snakes, hit the subscribe button and be sure to hit that bell icon. Thank you for slithering by, and I hope to see you again in the lair of legless legends.